Hello. Hi. Um, the end of the season is uh, soon approaching, and I thought it would. It's it's about time somebody just gave you basic tips in Rocket League that you can always go back to that just give you a basic guideline. I'm not going to tell you how to play the game. You need to just play the game to learn that. But a lot of people don't understand this when it comes to both trying to rank up or just trying to improve. So the first thing I want to say is that I uh, I think people are going to come at me because they're like, oh, what credentials do you have? Um, well, I have blue title. <laughs> I have... Four and a half K plus hours. I think I have five K hours or something. And I, if you care about rank, I'm 1665 currently. I don't know. Hey, you can hate it. You can you can love it, okay? GC2 coaches out there who are better than most SSL in terms of game sense. But anyway, not important. What is important is these things, these tips I'm about to tell you. Okay, cool. So, number one is mentality. It sounds very stupid, but listen here. These, this is probably gonna help you towards that end of the season grind where you're gonna want to hit the rank that you want to hit first of all mentality what is the important part about mentality you need to not only stay calm both when you're getting triggered in the game or if you notice that you're getting pissed off like a lot recently with the game take a break from it go to counter-strike go to anything else that isn't rocket league you need the break but also you need to be in the same mental space where you are in exactly where you want to be to learn you have to be able to take exactly what you're doing every single time in every single game and be able to learn about that. I'm going to go over this later again because it's pretty important. But first of all, mentality. Don't get tilted. Don't FF at 1 minute 20 seconds. Don't abandon. There's no point. If you really want to get good, lose a couple of games. Who the hell cares? Because you're going to learn. You're going to grow. You're going to become a better player overall. Okay, cool. Second thing. My, my notes. My notes are here. Positioning. You need to understand, right, that there's a difference between two's positioning, three's positioning. I can't really teach you one's positioning. One's just play once, all right? It's going to help you a lot. But if you need to, like, you really do need to understand that if somebody's in this corner where the ball is and he's passing mid in threes, what you might want to do is be hard mid in twos. What you kind of want to do is be kind of behind him, right? Because you have to cover both options in twos. In threes, there should be somebody behind you. It's not your responsibility if the ball goes over your head. Don't waste your boost. You just leave it. You need to understand where you need to be. You need to make your play and you need to leave. You need to give your teammates space. It's just basics. There's no need to rush. You can take your time all the way up into 1700, 1750 even. I know. I've been there in threes. I've solo queued to it. Haven't gotten SSR because I play on 180 ping. But that's an excuse. I plan on getting it soon, in any case. But you need to understand that you need to give your teammates space. You need to give them time. You also need to be the right distance away from them. How do you learn this trial and error? But a good yardstick is always being further behind the play than you'd want to be. Don't continue to drive, 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 boost. Oh, suddenly I'm here, and now the ball just goes over me, and now it's, it's in my net. Oh, no, awkward. Oh, no, I'm awkward. If you awkward a lot, that means you're following up way too close. And you're challenging at the wrong times. And that's kind of giving me into the third thing, right? You need to really understand something called challenge timings. I don't know. People don't say it. It kind of falls under positioning. Kind of also falls into mechanics and how you attempt your 50s. You need to challenge at the right times. And what that means is that you need to be able to see the play. You need to be able to see how much boost people have, how close they are to the ball. You have to make your judgments. Like, listen, if you lost back... The percentage play is to stay back, so just stay back. You can get boost, you buy your teammates time, sure. Sometimes, you need to hard rush the ball. Not all the time. It's a very rare occasion, but it's something that you need to learn. You need to understand it. There's no point in challenging for a ball with 100 boost if you're nowhere near it. Sometimes you fake challenge, you shadow, you just, no, no, I'm good, uh, and fake again, take your time, and then you can edge up a lot. Do whatever you like, right? You need to you just, just start thinking about it. Look for it the next time that you go into it. Just keep looking for these little things that you can improve in your game. And challenge timings and just 50s I think are really important. You need to learn how to hit the ball properly. And that's, that's the next point actually, which is staying grounded because this helps a lot. 
And it also ties into positioning as well. They're all kind of intertwined with each other. Rocket League is a game where you can't just master one thing and be really, really good at it. You have to be a balanced player. And the best way to do that for most of the time is staying grounded because the more you, you jump for things, if the ball is all the way in their corner and you're here and you just got 100 boost and your teammate is awkward and suddenly you're like, yeah, I think I should jump for this or like, you know, if, why? <laughs> if you have time, take your time. Stay on the floor. Don't waste your boost. You need to understand, you know, you get some pads, stay relevant in the play, face the ball, but always try to stay grounded and you know <clears throat> the most important thing in all of rocket league is back post just just go back post it it wins you games and like everything okay i don't know why i did that but anyway um yeah just remember you have teammates you have time people rush way too much you don't need to the only time you could actually play at the pace that you think you should be playing at is at ssl or RLCS, which, you know, people know about. You you play at a different pace, and even then, it's not rushed Rocket League. You should see how much time the pros take on the ball when they see that they have space. They, like, evaluate the decisions. They're like, hey, I can go high, I can pass low, I can fake, I can go for 50, just straight up help my team by time. You need to remember that you have so many options in a game of Rocket League. You don't just make the same, oh, tunnel vision, I'm going to take a shot. Or... I'm going to take a shot, or I'm going to just bang it up for no reason. I just understand how much time you have, and just overall not rushing the play is really useful, especially in, like, ranks, like, I think all the way up till Platinum. I think at that point, it's where people are not mechanically, you know, you're not stressing about double flip resets. You just... Maybe pushing up a little bit too much, maybe rushing, maybe challenging while your teammate's on it. Like, if your teammate needs to ball chase or sees that he thinks he needs to ball chase for the entire game, let him. Give him the space. Because most of the times, he's just going to run out of boost and immediately go back, and now suddenly it's all the onus is on you. If you're just watching the play, you go when you need to go, and suddenly you have a free ball. You can then shoot... Sure, you mess up, you can flick, you can do whatever you like. It doesn't really matter. The whole point is that you are in the most optimal position to make a decision. If your mechanics let you down, hey man, that's going to happen. So don't don't get butthurt over that. Yes, you should work on it, but it's not necessarily the reason why you're losing. Uh, number five. Creativity and mechanics. Being able to pull off a mechanical play with low boost extremely important very important just mechanics in general your consistency is something that a lot of people kind of look over and also just don't pay attention to or just over focus on those are those mechanical players who like think oh as soon as i got 100 boost i need to instantly double flip reset it's like no sometimes you can have your 100 boost fake beat one keep playing for 50 and pinch up and now suddenly it's a free pass to the entire left side of the pitch you you need to be mechanical, yes. As you go along the ranks, you'll realize that, wait, suddenly I need to be a little bit better at this. I need to be more consistent at this. Consistency is the most important thing. If you can hit a basic ball perfectly, it's much better than being able to do a triple flip reset, psycho, backboard, double tap, musty, breezy flick. Yes. <laughs> this, this, like, yes, it'll look cool. You'll, you'll hit that shot but you'll probably still be in Diamond 2. And that's not good. Don't do that. Uh, yeah. So, take your time. Get mechanical. Work on things. Try new things out in training, etc. Try it out in comps now and then. It's the only way you'll get better. But don't overdo it. Remember, sometimes all you need to do is chill. You can literally get to GC just by playing decent Rocket League, not overcommitting. And just overall being a very, I wouldn't say passive player. I'd say just observant player. If you just watch a little bit, go when you need to go. Yes, sometimes that would cause you to just wait behind too much. If you just understand when you need to challenge, when you can go for boost, when you should just help your teammate out, get some pads, then yeah, you, you'll always be good. So keep that in mind. And six and... Six, and then I'll do the last one. Last one is pretty important. Sixth one is consistency. 
And it kind of ties into mechanics, but I'm not only talking about mechanical consistency because that's what a lot of people usually go at when they talk about being consistent. Mechanics are a big part about consistency because it's, it means that you will play the same Rocket League, but consistency also has to do with positioning. The decisions that you make need to sort of not be just because you decided to do them. They have to have a reason. You have to understand that, okay, if I'm going for this ball, why am I going for it? Uh, what does it do? You cannot hit the ball just for the sake of, oh, I'm hitting the ball away from them. Like, no, I'm creating space. I'm buying time for my teammates. I am putting the ball in a decent place, you know? I'm taking my time. I'm playing for a 50. I'm luring one out to try and flick over. There's, there's a lot of ideas that you can do. There's always room for analyzing what you could do and i think the point the, the problem why people always say that consistency is mechanics is because they always think that there's only one option so if you can't mechanically do that one option over and over again why are you wasting your time on it you know if if there's a free open net or you know if there's a opponent net and your shot gets saved people say oh but you know mechanics you could have done something better and scored or something like that or, you know, use your brain a little bit and maybe you could have passed and just given a free shot to somebody else. So consistency both in your positioning and your mechanics is really important. Remember that, like, if you, you want to do a certain thing, there has to be a reason behind it. If I'm going back post consistently, you need to actively do it. And that's the last point I'm going to make, the seventh point. I don't know if my numbering was off. I apologize if it is, but... Yeah. <laughs> um, the important thing is that if you want to improve at Rocket League at any rank, doesn't matter, you have to actively learn. You, you always have to be actively learning in-game. You have to be thinking about a lot of things. You have to be thinking about your opponents. You have to be thinking about your teammates. And you have to be thinking about yourself. Because you have a lot of power when you're on the ball, but you also have a lot of power when you're off the ball. You can make the conscious decision to rotate back post. You can make the conscious decision to give your teammates space. You can make the conscious decision to go for the double tap and hit it. You have to make the conscious decision to be like, yo, okay, I'm going to beat one and then tap over and then look for a bump on the guy on the backboard. You need to actively learn. A lot of people don't do this because they go into this like autopilot mode and people do it at tournaments too. People do it in RLCS and it's really funny to watch and play against is because they are somehow insane in scrims they'll play the best Rocket League of their life and then they just lose that creativity. They lose that, I'm actively working on something. You know, our coach told us to do this. And then they just go into, oh, hit ball, not really pay attention. I'm um, zero boost, pinch it, pass it to them. You start making bad decisions and you basically just want to minimize bad decisions. So yeah, okay. Final rundown is if you're in bronze to gold, work on giving space to your teammates not overcommitting, and basic consistency. Hit an aerial, get a good touch, don't try and waste too much boost, just, you know, hit a ball, be consistent, cool. I'd say plat to diamond is probably a second grouping we could make, and low champ, possibly. No, I, th I think plat to diamond is fair. You start working on your aerials a lot, because I've seen replays of plats and diamonds recently, and it's, it's looking, I won't say bad. You guys are learning. There's, there's no way for me to, you know, be rude and critique you if you haven't played the game that much. But that's probably your focus areas. It's also going to be rotations. You're going to understand where you have to be in twos and threes. What's the best position for you and your teammate? What covers more options, etc. Then we're going to, like, champs to grand champ. If you want to push for GC, which is not too difficult, you just need to start understanding that your consistency is important. You cannot miss balls, just missing balls. I've seen a lot of champs just miss easy shots trying to do something insane. There's no reason to do that sometimes. Sometimes just understand your ability, grind your mechanics in your off time, but what you can do in comp is what you should be doing in comp. Don't don't push it too much if you're really, really worried about your rank. If you're worried about improving, try it now and then. It's worth a shot. And then I'd say for GCSSL, even though I'm not there, I mean, I've played at the level of it, but hey, uh... Mechanics, 
challenge timings. Challenge timings are huge, man. That's that's the difference between you being a good player and you being a really decent player. Like, a really, really good player. You need to understand the small things. So that's when you start looking at, okay, at what distances can we go specifically, at what 50s can I go for, you know, well, my teammates are, you need to, like, you need to look a lot. And mechanically, you have to be very sound. You you don't miss balls. You do exactly what you want to do. You hit every flip reset you want to hit. Creativity. It's you, Then you start playing more free Rocket League, but it's because you have these fundamentals already down that you don't think about them. It's still important to think about a lot in-game, I think. I'd say, personally, players who have a lot more options in-game in their heads, you will always be ahead. Sometimes it causes them to hesitate, think they're making the wrong decision, this, that. Don't do that. Rather make the wrong decision quickly than the right decision slowly. This is, again, only for the GCSSL, guys. There's this... Everybody else, take your time. <laughs> you, you have a lot of time. <laughs> Don't rush. But yeah, that's... Uh, I think these are just tips that and things that you need to keep in mind. And it will never age. It's not, oh, you're bronze now. You need to learn specifically how to do a mechanic. It, it's not like that at all. I don't think it ever should be because the level of player will, of course, improve. The level of mechanics at every rank will always improve, change. These are just rules that you you should keep in mind regardless of where you're at. You should just think about it, be like, hey, okay, maybe I can implement this. Maybe I can do this. Analyze your own gameplay. See what you're doing wrong. See, okay, wait, uh... Yeah, maybe I was up a little bit too close and that's why they scored that goal. Okay, I'll try not to do that again. Or, hey, my mechanics are letting me down. I'm just going to chill on free play for a bit, try and train, and then uh, I'll queue again. Don't get angry. Just take your time. Free play is amazing. You could literally spend hours upon hours in it. And it's, it's proven that a lot of pros and higher ranked players spend more time in free play than they do in ranked. It's why they're better. Because you are now making less mistakes and you understand a lot more. Like, yes, you'll make bad decisions around teammates, etc. But hey, if you're solo queuing, you can only control so much. And you need to understand that. And if you're queuing with teammates, you can only, again, control so much. The only time you control 100% of the game is once. And even then, you know, there's another player there. So, a Rocket League, man. It's a beautiful game. So much going on. But I think it's important to remember those things. So, yeah. Quick recap. And then I will be gone. I will not lecture you anymore. Mentality, positioning, help your teammates, stay grounded, mechanics and creativity, consistency. And then the most important one, the last one, is actively learning from every situation. But yeah, that's my tips for you forever in Rocket League. Maybe I'll make a better one. I'll make it a little bit more in-depth. I'll add replays where I can show you examples. But if you've played Rocket League for all of about 20 hours, you know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> but yeah, have fun. Stay safe. Don't be toxic. Okay. Bye bye. <laughs> I will see you in two years when you're playing in RLCS. That's that's the important part.